Thus far, the concerts I have attempted to isolate did uh, predate the period that I have singled out for attention. The geography of the plateau had obviously not altered in historical times. The uh, literary uh, tradition and the social pattern were in place before the end of the royal dynasty of the Yasses in 428. Nevertheless, additional elements were imperative for the consolidation of the nation. Most important from that point of view uh, was uh, that Armenia was still administratively and politically devoid of unity. In the fourth century, it had been divided into three units. The Roman provinces of Armenia Prima and Secunda, west of the Euphrates, were an intrinsic part of the Roman Empire. The kingdom of Greater Armenia, oh, a client of Rome, but ruled by descendants of the Parthian ruling dynasty, lay beyond the river, and most of it would belong to Sasanian Persia before the end of the century. Finally, a series of semi-autonomous principalities in the south along the eastern Euphrates, the Murad, the Murad Su, added to this political confusion. Furthermore, the former Assassin Kingdom was, was to be unevenly divided between Byzantium and Persia by the end of the fourth century, leaving its major part to the Persians. And it was to be redivided in 591 by a treaty which returned most of the Armenian lands to Byzantium. Meanwhile, the division of the Byzantine portion of Armenia, mixed with some territories taken from northern Pontus, into four Armenias in 536, by the great administrative reform of Justinian, compounded the confusion still further. Even more critically, for the survival of an Armenian identity, the great defeat of Avarire in 451, when most of the Armenian nobility faced with a Persian attempt to reimpose Zoroastrianism on an already Christian Armenia, and grouped around its hereditary commander-in-chief, Vardan Babikonyan, preferred martyrdom to apostasy and was all but annihilated by the Persians, thus critically damaging the crucial social structure of the country now abandoned to the minor children of the dead. As I began by saying, historians have usually passed over the subsequent interregnum of the 6th to the 8th century as a dark and unpromising epoch during which Armenia was politically subjugated by its powerful neighbors and culturally inferior to the preceding golden age. Nevertheless, I should like to consider it now, on the contrary, rather as the period in which the fundamental aspects of the Armenian nation were laid down and consolidated. To be sure, the contemporary sources give a visible picture of foreign overlordship, be it Byzantine, Persian, or eventually Arab, during which Armenia was dominated by foreign governors, when almost constant internal and external wars harrowed the country and the first massive deportations of Armenians to Cyprus and the Balkans took place. Even though a centralized state had not been characteristic of Armenia, even in the so-called Golden Age, the interregnum had indeed little to recommend it in the usual patriotic sense. Yet it is difficult to dismiss it as culturally an inferior period in the face of the presence of such outstanding intellectuals as Adanya Shiragatsi in the seventh century, mathematician and cosmographer, the probable author of the Armenian geography, or Ashahatowitz, to which I shall return, who was still familiar with the great geographers of antiquity, such as Papus of Alexandria Ptolemy, whom he cites by name, and Stepanos Sunetsi, who died in 735, translator, theologian, liturgist, and musician. Or again, the great Catholic theologians, both Gomitas, who not only rebuilt the martyr of the Virgin Martyrs at Varashapat, but seems to have been the moving spirit behind the dogmatic compilation known as the Seal of the Faith, the Nikavadov. And even more, 
from an assassinate scene known as the philosopher, the great reorganizer of the Armenian church and prom uh, promulgator of the first Armenian book of canons in 719. It is furthermore during the interregnum and not before that the first truly celibatic, that is to say, stable monastic foundations, which were to be the precursors of the great monastery universities, uh, the intellectual centers of the later Middle Ages, begin to replace the peripatetic eremitic pattern of the earlier period. Far from disappearing, the great historiographic tradition inaugurated in the fifth century was maintained in this period despite its tumultuous nature. The history attributed to Bishop Semeos in the seventh century and to a lesser degree that of Raymond the priest in the eighth, the, the, the earlier limits of a purely national history were now transcended in an attempt to place Armenia in the framework of the contemporary world and so lead to the great synthesis of Moses Koranasi at the turn of the 8th to the 9th century. Despite the Jeremiah's of the contemporary historians over the sad state of their country, it is in the 7th century that a network of churches, many still standing, covered the Armenian plateau. Some of them are small. The Karbravor at Ashtarak, St. Sergius of Bajini, the Holy Innocents of Oshagan, Lembat, Pemzashed, Bastara, Tallinn. But others are of majestic size, not only Komitas' reconstruction of the material of the saints, Shripsime and Gayane at Vahashabat, but at Bren, at Paterni, at Sisian, at Gardahovit, on the slopes of Mount Aragat, and the great cathedrals at Aruch, Tallinn, and finally Ozun. Yet, architecture is the slowest and most expensive of the arts. The simultaneous appearance of these monuments necessarily bespeaks periods or and regions of peace and prosperity. One does not build on battlefields. More importantly, such cathedrals as those of Aruch and Tallinn were erected next to the palaces of the great families, the Babikonian and the Kamzarakan, and bear inscriptions naming their founders. The smaller size of many of the other churches suggests that they were the palatine chapels of the great class rather than Episcopal or urban foundations. As is explicitly stated in the still legible inscription on the little church of the Mother of God at Tallinn, and I quote, I, Nerse, Apohipatos and Patrician, Lord of Shirak and Asharudik, built this church in the name of the Holy Mother of God and in intercession for myself, for Shushan, my spouse, and for Frahat, our son, and for nobody else. As such, their appearance bears witness to the reconstruction the reconstit of the nexus of great families on which the characteristic Armenian aristocratic society uh, relied, a society which had been all but destroyed by the disaster of Avariah, but now the children and grandchildren of the dead had grown up and regained their rights and prerogatives. Most important of all was the evolution of the Armenian church. As early as the fourth century, it had proclaimed its autocephaly, whereby it recognized no superior authority on earth, and its autonomy had been recognized by the Persians in 485. But only in the 7th to 8th century did it fully assume its role as the leader of the nation, substituting itself for the non-existent state as the focal point for the allegiance of all the Armenians. Not only was the early division between the Hellenic North and the Syriac South of the early period finally overcome as both Northern and Southern bishops attended the two great councils at Vin in the 6th century, but the church at long last reached a formulation of its own distinctive doctrine. 